Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, just recovering from a birdhouse entry. And uh, you know, I'll tell you, whenever I do any woodworking, I kind of make a little bit more of a mess of the shop than normally. Normally, if I'm doing a tool restoration, you got one tool or whatever to do. But when I'm doing wood, you know, I got everything covered up and I got I to gotta do some cleaning up today. But there's a couple things I want to talk about. First thing I want to talk about today was, uh, if you remember, it's been a month since my injury with the, uh, the angle grinder. And for those of you uh, that don't know, what happened was I was uh, doing the Black Beauty axe and uh, it started to slip and I went to grab and I actually grabbed the uh, spinning angle grinder with the flap disc and I uh, tore off... Uh, a little, you know, about six of my seven layers of skin. Now, uh, the first thing you have to remember is obviously, you know, you got to do a lot of cleaning and everything because, you know, I'm always worried about infection. Infection is the big thing you have to worry about. So uh, I'm going to show you if you're a little squeamish, don't, uh, you know, might want to look away. But this is what it looked like uh, the day after the accident, you know, the little incident rather. And you can see here it's uh, it's a little bit reddish and, you know, and, and it, that's when you start to see it and the pain sets in or whatever. But it still wasn't too painful, but it was, it was you could see it was an injury that was going to take time to heal. Uh, next picture I have is uh, a couple, you know, two weeks after. And you can see it's starting to heal up pretty nicely at this time. And then the uh, next picture is uh, three weeks after. And you can see it's coming nicely. And, uh, and so what I did was I made sure that for the first week, uh, I put a, uh, antibacterial ointment, like a Neosporin or Bacitracin or something. You put that on, keep it covered to stop the infection. Then by that time, when you're sure it's not going to be infected, that's when I just started putting some, uh, A and D ointment on, keeping it covered. I kept it covered the entire time. And it healed up pretty nice. So let me show you what it looks like. Now. And we are calling this finger healed. Yeah, I think it came out pretty good, right? Fingerprints almost back. And this is, I was trying a different healing. You know, I've been injured before and tried different things. But this time, like I said, I kept it covered constantly. And I kept it always with some uh, petroleum vitamin ointment on so it would never dry out. And it healed without any, uh, so it's back to normal and uh so this is the first day i don't have a band-aid okay next up uh a good friend of the show named arvid from sweden uh arvid uh, it was looking in front of i guess near his home or something and he saw in the in the pavement in the street he saw this and look at that it's a uh, wrench it's a baco and it's a combination they had the alligator on one end and the adjustable on the other and uh, he sent me that picture. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, uh, if you're like me, uh, you would have been out there and chiseled that tool out of this <laughs> out of the street, right? I remember back in 1972, uh, in the summer, we used to. I we got a kick. I don't know what it was. Some kid found out that on a hot summer day, the pavement got kind of soft enough with the hot sun that you could use a screwdriver and carve your name into the pavement. So. That's all we were at, at, as kids, everybody in front of their house had their names carved in, in the pavement in the street using a screwdriver. Am I the only one that has, has done that? Or is that a New York City thing? Have you ever heard of something like that? Instead of graffiti, instead of spray paint, we carved our name. You know, we used to do it in trees. Remember years ago, you go carve your name in a tree, but this was in the pavement. That's a kind of a city thing, right? Okay, let's see what else we Now, got. next up, I'd like to talk real quick about the scroll saw. And I've been using a lot of this uh, on uh, on the birdhouse. And, and this is a, uh, a work call. Years ago, these were really popular. And, you know, you don't see them too much anymore. You don't see people using scroll saws. But they they, they come in and out of being popular. It's funny. Uh, but this one here is, uh, I guess it's about 20 years old. It's an old craftsman. But they're all about the same thing. What a scroll saw is, basically, it's an arm that uh, is run by a motor here and you can see this pivots up and down and it uses a, a, a blade here. Now different saws will use different blades but this particular type saw uses a pin blade. You see it's got a little pin on the top and the bottom and that catches in this little groove here. Now if you look here there's uh it, you can go in one of two ways. It can go in 
uh, facing towards the side like this so you can feed your, your your items this way or you could put it in like this and feed your items straight uh, through the front and the same goes with the bottom you can see on the bottom here there's a little catch and it does the same thing it could go either way from left or right and uh, and this way uh, that's how you put the blade in now What's interesting is, uh, like I said, this one here uses a, a five inch uh, pinned blade, but other ones have just a blade here with nothing that you would tighten up a screw on the top. I have a really good uh, scroll saw up in the attic, a, uh, a DeWalt. But um, I've had this. This was my first one that I bought, and it, it you know, something. It, it, they all work very well. If you if you are, are looking to buy a scroll saw, um, it does intricate work, and you can work very close to the blade. It's very safe unless you touch the blade, you know. But even the blades, if you notice the teeth, you know, it's not too aggressive where you're really gonna hurt yourself. But um, what you would do is to mount the blade, um, you would put it in here and you would line it up with the bottom here, especially I'm going to go with the uh, front and back here, get it into the slot, push this down here, and then you tighten the blade up until it makes, using this back here, this knob, you tighten this knob up and you, you adjust the tension of the blade and you can hear, listen when I... Now when it's nice and tight like that, it's ready to cut. Now, like I said, they're a super simple saw and uh, th probably the only feature that this has other than the blade going up and down is that the fact that you can adjust it to tilt the table to make uh, angle cuts and things like that. And again, whenever you tilt the table, you have to put a square up here to make sure that uh, that you're at 90 degrees before you tighten it down. And let me give you an example of things you now, can Now again, cut. to make sure your blade is uh, perpendicular to the surface, you take your little square here, you put it right there and, and that's it, that's fine. And uh, you don't want to have your table uh, tilted one way or the other. Now, let me show you how easily this cuts through. We'll take a piece of scrap plywood here and I'll show you. Now, you can work real close to the blade, not worrying that you're going to get either drawn in or a dangerous like a bandsaw. Uh, a scroll saw is very easy to work close, close with and I'll show you how quick it cuts. Now, one feature that a lot of people use the scroll saw for is if you wanted to cut a square in a piece of wood like this, it's very difficult to do uh, normally, especially a small one like this. But uh, with a scroll saw, all you have to do is drill a hole and then we'll place the blade through the hole and I'll show you how that's done. Okay, now you see what we did. We uh, we put the blade in through that hole, so now we can cut it out and make our get a square in here using uh, the scroll saw like this. And there you can see we have our square cut out. And you know, if you were doing uh, bird houses or something where you needed a square. A hole and it does make a, a fairly clean this is plywood but it does make a, a fairly clean cut and especially if you use a sharp blade you can get these in different teeth and different uh, sizes and it's always good to remember that the scroll saw always the blade has to be facing down meaning the teeth face down so it cuts on the downstroke not on the upstroke if you have the blade reversed you your wood would keep lifting up by, by keeping it this way it, it uh, works very and lastly well. scroll saws are known for the cutting out now if you wanted to you could print out a whole bunch of letters on the computer and you could trace it onto a piece of wood and then you could cut these out and then glue them onto something and make plaques and there's a lot of craft stuff you could do with this see how easy it is to cut out all kinds of shapes and whatnot. Now, here are a few fun projects you could do with any scroll saw, so don't be intimidated if you feel like trying to give one a try. Okay, next up, remember our buddy Juan Marquez from Maryland sent in a few box of nice tools, and this one got everybody's interest, you know, because we didn't know if this was a pry bar or a screwdriver because of the upswept curve, and it was funny how, every, how many people chimed in. 
uh, people saying it's definitely a pry bar, and some people saying it's a screw. Well, uh, a good friend of the show, David Coates, sent in this picture. He said, David said uh, he has one that's similar, and it's a screwdriver, you know, his. But it's a little bit different, but it has the same stacked handle. But his don't have the, uh, I don't know if this is, it's more than an octagon. I don't know how many sides there are to this. But you can see it's like a, you know, a segmented shaft. And uh, let's clean this up a little bit. It's bent. You can see it's got a couple bends to it. You know, it's kind of wiggly. So we're going to have to try and straighten it out. The cap, look at the back here. That's a real mess, right? And the and this ferrule is a mess. And of course, the stack leather, how do you deal with that? So let's see what we can, let's try and clean this up a little bit and see what we've got going on. Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation. You can see the, the bends are more pronounced now. You can see after, you see it? You see it's got a little warp down here, It'll, you know. It is, uh, obviously, there's nine sides to this, okay? So it's uh, nine-sided, and then it goes down to a, a round over here. And you can see this bend over here, right? You can see it. There's another bend up here, so it's all wobbly. And you can see the condition. You can see we got some serious, uh, you know, pitting and whatnot here. And the cap, the back cap, you can see over here we got some bangs and whatnot so it was used and the only markings on here is a cab and i believe that somebody stamped their name in here their initials so uh well, let's see what we can do with this first let's take it over to the dake and see if we can straighten out some of these okay bangs. here we are at the dake everybody's favorite and you can see the setup here we have the screwdriver resting between two blocks of wood and we marked with a marker on the high spot so it's a little easier to manipulate. Let's uh, give it a crank and okay, see what here's happens. here's our first one. Now you see, we're just giving a little bit. The plywood will absorb a little bit, but we, oh, there we go. See how that's, now watch how it unflexes when we release the pressure. You see that, how it springs back? So you always got to go past a little bit. Okay, one thing to remember is we're going to work our way from the this way down, okay? Because there's no sense in straightening it out here and, you know, it's still bent up here. So you work your way in one direction. So we have that one. You can see here we got some, you know, major twists in it over here. We got a big one over here, but we got to make sure we have nothing up here. And uh, I'm going to look. You see that little marker we put? I'm going to make sure that we don't have anything up here before we move down It looks here. like we have one right there. We'll give it a crank. We, we're not even registering a quarter of a ton. So it's very low pressure here. But you can see what we're doing. And then we'll release it and take a look. You can see it spring back. Okay, we have one here towards the tip. All right, that looks about a little bit more. There we go. Take a look at that now. I can see it's already starting to straighten now, out. Now, the more I'm straightening this out, the more I'm starting to think that this is definitely was a screwdriver because look at the grind on that blade. You see that grind, that side grind, and, you know, that's a screwdriver grind. So I'm going to straighten it out and uh, make it back into a screwdriver, like I said because we got David's picture. So let's let's see and keep working on this, and especially the tip of the blade. Let me show you how we'll okay, do we that. We have the very tip resting on a metal plate on top of the wood. So you have some, this will distribute the weight across the wood and you, that should straighten it out nicely. See here, there we go. That'll straighten it out without putting a bend in the shaft, just the tip. Take a look here from the side. Okay, and we'll take a look at the tip now, okay? Okay, we just, we're getting close. It's very close. We just got to go a little bit the other way, but looks good. Maybe a little shot right there. There we go. We're getting real close. Okay, we finished all the metal work and everything. Everything's nice and straight. Now we have to address the handle. Now I sanded it down. I wiped it down with denatured alcohol. And we're going to have to give it a couple coats of shellac to seal it. And then we'll uh, we'll paint it. That's what, that's what it was from the factory. 
and uh, everything's coming nice. Did the end cap, so let's get to the uh, shellacking. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this screwdriver looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. It's another project that looks super simple but turned out to have a little bit more work in it than it looks. Uh, okay, first of all, let's start with the back. We've got the back all nice and polished out, right? And over here, I did this with shoe polish. You know, it's leather and that's what you normally use, right? And the more you do shoe polish, the better. And it has a nice feel to it, you know, not slippery or anything. The two red stripes, you know, the scout mist. And, you know, the facets, keeping these facets were difficult because you had to do each one individually not to lose them. And then it transitions down to round down here. You see that? And then uh, just cleaned up the tip, straightened it out. Again, like I said, I do believe this is a, uh, a screwdriver and got the tip all nice. So uh, this is a really nice project. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I looked these up on the Internet. I found a couple of them. But a lot of them had bronze on one end to the other. There was only a few leather stacked leather handle screwdrivers I could find, especially antique ones. But they were all screwdrivers. I didn't find any pry bars. Not to mention, pry bars have a slightly different geometry around the tip. And they usually, instead of bending on the tip, they usually bend back here just before. So that's why I'm kind of thinking that this might have been a screwdriver. Either way, it's done this one's in the can. Closing, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, special thanks to Juan for today's project, Juan Marquez in Maryland. And uh, we'll be talking to you again on Friday. Take care now. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.